In a remarkable demonstration of their access and influence, CARE exploited a dying child to attack Donald Trump and subvert national immigration policy. It took a massive national campaign and lawsuit by CARE and Nimmer Law, as well as, well as the support of elected officials, Empower Change and the general public to make this happen. Together with Linda Sarsour, they were able to saturate the media and affect this national level program. And the media were willing and enthusiastic allies. Visit her dying child is being denied entry to the U.S. because of a controversial travel ban. Two-year-old Abdullah Hassan, a U.S. citizen, is on life support at a children's hospital in Oakland. His mother is barred from flying to the U.S. by President Trump's so-called Muslim ban and is stuck more than 7,500 miles away in Egypt. At a Sacramento news conference was called today by CARE, that is the Council on American-Islamic Relations. While CARE says it's reached out to local lawmakers for additional support. Now the Council on American-Islamic Relations is stepping up to try to speed up the process. I'm here today because my son Abdullah needs his mother. My wife is calling me every day. Wanted to kiss and hold her son. Oh. For the one last time. The Council on American Islamic Relations says it plans to file suit to speed up the process. We're calling for the Department of State to issue a Muslim ban waiver to allow Shaima Suela, the wife of a U.S. citizen, the mother of a U.S. citizen, to hold her child one last time. Time is, time is running now. Please help us get my family together again. We are ready to fly her out at a moment's notice as soon as we receive this waiver, hopefully today. The Muslim American group CARE, they've uh, launched a petition drive now. This is aimed at putting pressure on the State Department, and you can find a link on our website, cron4.com. Hassan Abdullah is only two years old. We celebrate his birthday just two days ago. Time is running now. Please help us get my family together again. Time is running now. Please help us get my family together again. Is that who we are? The story received national as well as international coverage. The dying child story yes. reached as far as uh, Europe. Do you think there's a problem in the U.S. with the way uh, that Muslim communities are, are seen? Men and Africa. Hassan and Shama's two-year-old son, Abdullah, suffers a rare brain disease. In the beginning, the broadcasts were on local news every half hour. Indeed, this PR campaign went on morning, noon, and night at the start of its news cycle, until it finally ended after running seven days for an average of 5.4 times a day in December. You felt crummy if it ever got wearisome. Yeah, and it really is heartbreaking. It is very sad. It's a heartbreaking story, Liz. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. What a heartbreaking situation, though. All right, Susie, thank absolutely. you. Absolutely. Very difficult for this family. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Wouldn't it be a more heartbreaking story if we could actually relate to the people involved? Ali, what is your reaction to this news that we've just got about your wife? To be honest, it's the best news I've ever had. <clears throat> mm. How long has this been going on, sir? Say it again, please. How long has this process been going on? How long has it been that you've been in the States without your wife, with your son? It's been almost three months without my wife, with her son. Mm. That must be terribly hard. Shima Swila and her husband, Ali Hassan, have waited. This process shows that this is a Muslim ban and that this waiver is a sham. She didn't say a word to the community, the strangers, and her supporters who gathered in the dozens at SFO for her arrival say they could feel her pain. It's too much pain. You know, everybody knows, the mom knows. There were over 40 broadcasts about this story that exhibited paid product placement and defying the president. This kid spent the last few months without his mom because of Donald Trump's Muslim ban. How the country's current immigration policies are hurting children. We had a seven-year-old girl die in American custody. We had an eight-year-old boy die in American custody. And now we have a two-year-old American boy, a U.S. citizen, who's dead after he couldn't come here earlier to receive the medical treatment he needed. In a reprise of Donald Trump and the crying child, the details of this story never widened beyond the image of the child, Donald Trump, and care.
We do have an important update to a story we've been following closely this morning. A Yemeni mother who had been blocked from seeing her dying son in California because of the Trump administration's travel ban has just been granted a visa to come to the United States. Yeah, this appears to be a response to pressure from coverage of the story by CNN and other media outlets. This was a rehearsed, scripted political message that used a dying child as a prop to manipulate popular opinion and influence public policy to promote chain migration. You know, with all that said, um, we are grateful, we're thankful that she's now received a visa. So let's be clear. Issuance of her visa this week was not an act of kindness on their part. I think this is a sham process and this case really shows that. After the, the, the government really, you know, they have to be embarrassed after seeing what happened in this case. CARE Sacramento Valley civil rights attorney Saad Swalem said the case shows the realities of the ban. I think this was an embarrassment to the Trump administration and it should be, they should be embarrassed. So hopefully they'll look at this case and realize the consequences of their policies and it'll change things for uh, other families going forward. You really have to ask yourself, what is the purpose of this ban? CARE might have been gracious and thankful for the speedy resolution of their case as well as acknowledge the difficult times we live in where jihad attacks can seemingly occur every other month. Indeed, almost three years to the date of the dying child story, the San Bernardino attacks occurred. At that time, the deadliest terror attack on U.S. soil since 9-11, committed by a Muslim immigrant, to which Trump spoke. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on. What is going on is that we are refusing to acknowledge we are in a war. The enemy is behind the lines and operating under the guise of the Council on American-Islamic Relations.